service this morning, we'll be singing number 32, Rejoice the Lord is King. And if you stand when you get there. Starving at this point. They, they don't have 
shelter many of them. They don't have food. They're sick. They're hungry. What are they going to do with all their pets? They're taking care of their pets. They can't take care of themselves. And those pets then turn wild, turn feral. And so then that's all going on. And you can imagine, I mean, think of the, just the dogs and the cats that we have in the United States. Cut all them loose. Let them go. Zoos with all their animals, what are they going to do? Can't feed them. <clears throat> They're just going to let them go. And, and so there's going to be animals prowling around in, in different places in the world, like the United States, animals that aren't native to this country. And all of those things are going to be going on, also included in this death, these things that are going on. And so, again, as this fourth seal was opened, John, again, again, he starts talking to the witness and the events thereunto. So again, just let me walk down through this, verses 7 and 8, and if you stand for the reading of God's word. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death. And that means pestilence, disease, with death, and with beasts of the earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, again, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for sharing with us the future. Heavenly Father, God, we know what's going to happen. But praise God in knowing that future. We also know that we as believers are not going to be here. And so, God, thank you. Thank you for the rapture of the church. Thank you that we will be, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we simply will no longer be on this earth. And this matter of the tribulation happens after that. So, Heavenly Father, God, as we study through these things, these are going to affect others, not us, but the reality is how we need to see this, how we need to allow this to motivate us into being better witnesses to a lost and a dying world. And so God will thank you for it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so again, as, as we walk down through and we look at this, this pale horse, uh, chloros is the Greek word for pale. And in the idea there is it's sort of a, a light green or, or even a a pale yellowish green and the idea there is this color is a putrefaction I mean this is just as this is ugly and then what has he come to do he said the power was given over a fourth part of the earth one fourth and of course as always start reading these commentaries and stuff these guys always have interesting takes on that and some say well it's a fourth part of the earth so it's 25 percent of the earth's surface Okay, all of that, people, animals, that surface, everything in that four, that, that's all going to be dead. But that's really not the direction, in my opinion, that this is going. Uh, this is talking about a fourth of the people in this world. Mm -hmm. This is going to be worldwide, if you will. And again, as you see, four different ways he lays out uh, that they're going to be killed or how they're going to die uh, during this time period. And he says, moreover, that name of this rider, <clears throat> one of the riders or two, we're not given their name. We don't know who's riding the horse. You know, the first one, the white horse, we, we see that, I think it's pretty obvious, that, that ends up being what? The Antichrist. And we come down here, and this tells us, said, listen, this name of this rider is death, Thanatos. This is death and hell. And so this Thanatos, this, this, this one who is riding this pale horse, as he comes, what does he now bring to, and this is the beginning three and a half years of the tribulation, what does he bring to this? He brings death and hell, if you will, trails behind him. And so he's bringing death in the four ways that were already described to a quarter of the world's population. Well, you know, you can start running all kinds of numbers around, but basically with where we are right now in this world, uh, that adds up to about one and a half billion people, mm -hmm. at least 
one and a half billion people. Now, the Second World War and everyone who died around the world of the Second World War is figured to be about 50 million. Well, that's, but a, that's a drop in the bucket to one and a half billion people. This is going to be unbelievably catastrophic when this happens. And again, they're going to be dying in all different manners of death. And so we see this death is coming to stand at us as well as hell, which is again, the, the Greek word here is Hades, which we're all very familiar with. And this word Hades refers to what? The realm of the dead uh, or hell itself, the way we understand a burning, blazing hell. Okay, the reference here. Or it's used in general as a reference to the grave. And so as he comes, this one who brings death and hell trails with him. Uh, he is coming through, death is happening, and hell, if you will. And these people they're talking about, for the most part here, they're unbelievers. Rapture's happened, we're gone. We're going into the first three and a half years. There are some getting saved, but again, they're what? They're being put to death as quickly as they can get to them. So by far, the greater number of these are the lost. And so actually, whichever way you want to look at this, well, that just means the grave. Well, no, no, that actually means a burning hell. No, it means both. These people are going to die. If somebody's around and gracious enough, they'll go to the grave. <laughs> uh, if not, they're just going to lay out there. And again, the beasts that we talked about, they don't care if your life is dead. And that will be taken care of. But then what happens to the unsaved at death? Go to hell. And so death and hell follows with him. And again, the great lake of fire that we see here. But to John, again, it was revealed. Power was given unto them over this fourth part of the, of the earth. And it just can't be stressed enough that there's with multiple ways of death that this is happening. First, he says what? The sword. Death from either military action or simply civil violence. Because at first, it appears it's probably going to be military, but then when everybody's starving, everybody's lost everything, and we talked about the different nations, especially out over in the Middle East, we see the pictures where they've been bombed and just totally devastated. You know, it's just smoke and rubble, and, and that's the idea here. And so the, it's going to be absolute devastation. These things are becoming on. People, they, they, they're just looking for something to eat. And so, boy, you know what? I think my neighbor has food. So what's going to happen to this neighbor that they've got along with for years? They're going to start looking at him as their only way to stay alive. And so it isn't just going to be within military action. It's also going to be within what, civil action. And when those things happen, we, again, we talked about it last week also. Uh, listen, everything simply breaks down. Everything begins to fall apart. Uh, there, there is no civility left, if you will, in the world, except in one place. The first three and a half years, where's the one place? Israel. Israel is basking <laughs> at this point in time in peace because the Antichrist has signed a seven-year covenant with Israel. We already looked at that. He signed a seven-year covenant with Israel of which he is going to break at three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so we see these things. This is this transpiring. This hasn't happened yet. We see it coming because we've read the book of Daniel. And so as these things continue to move forward, the sword, death, military or civil violence, hunger, death from starvation, resulting from widespread famine, because in all of these places, they've just been, they've been almost completely destroyed. And so then with that going on and the destruction that has taken place, then it simply says in death. Well, death, it's the idea there of disease, and again, back to the idea of famine. They're, they're, they're dying because they have no food. They're dying because they're starving to death. They're dying because they're sick and, and all of those things. And then beasts of the earth, this death from wild animals literally rampaging 
throughout this collective famine and chaos that's going on here on earth. The, the unbelievable, again, amount of death. It, it's ugly. Um, it's never happened before. It, it is not known, again, to this world. And yet, it is not going to be unleashed. But we know. It's the amazing thing. All those who are Bible deniers, all those who want to push God and Christ away, all of those who could have known what was coming, all of those who should have been convicted by the truth of the Word of God and come to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, but they have refused. And again, we've talked about numbers of times over the years that those who, what, as the rapture comes and all the believers are taken out, those who have heard, clearly heard, a presentation of the gospel at that point in time. And now, they go away with what? And start into this tribulation time. They are given a strong what? A new delusion to believe the lie. They're given a strong delusion to believe the lie. What lie? The lie that they have said they believed all their lives. Jesus Christ isn't my Savior. There is no God. You know, whatever their excuses have been to deny Jesus Christ, they're going to continue to believe, my, in my opinion, that lie. Whatever their lie to themselves were, was within their hearts. They, 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 this, this, is, uh, this is the hill I'm going to die on, right? Okay, no. They're not going to change their mind. This has been their excuse all along. And they're going to believe the lie. And what a horrible thing. As they see this, and we'll see this a little bit more as we move through chapter 6 and 7. But again, opening now as we go to verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Boy, now we get a vision. What? We've been looking at these things. Come here. <clears throat> Look what's going on. <clears throat> and he's been looking where? On the earth. On the earth. What's going on on earth? We shift gears right here and he goes to heaven. And as we look at this verse, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, talk about the altar in heaven, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held. Now, these are those, this is not the church, okay? We've had church martyrs during the church age. Church age was over when what happened? Rapture. When the rapture happened, church age is done. And so this isn't the church. This is now those who are being saved, receiving Jesus Christ during the tribulation time. And so these souls, again, what do they do? They begin, anyone who receives Jesus Christ as Savior, um, the Antichrist wants what to happen to them. Nice. He wants every single one of them dead. And, and so, and that's happening as quickly as they can. As soon as they find out somebody got saved, they're putting them to death as soon as they get their hands on them. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them were slain for the word of God even though they're in the tribulation, even though they know that the Antichrist wants them dead, what are they getting slain for? The word of God and for the testimony which they held. Again, I've said this before, they just wouldn't shut up. Okay? They got saved by Jesus Christ. They know at that point in time. You know, when you can say what? So that ye may know you have eternal life. Suddenly they know they have eternal life in Jesus Christ. And they want to tell their family. They want to tell people who have been their friends. And even though those friends may be turning against them, they say, no, no, listen, listen. You need to know about Jesus. I mean, they got a testimony from the Word of God, their testimony of salvation. And what happens then? They get killed for the Word of God and the testimony. And in which they held. The idea there is they wouldn't give it up. They held it. They got a hold of it as tight as you can possibly hold on. And they are not going to let go. Listen, kill me. I believe Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And, and so that there, if you will, their testimony. They were slain. Uh, svazo is the Greek word uh, that is used there. It implies death by violence or butchery. And remember, we get later on in, in the book of the Revelation, and how were they killed? Beheaded. Okay. And, and so not all of them, but, but many of them, as we will see as we, we get on uh, in the book of the Revelation. And so these souls who have been martyred for the word of God and the testimony, they were what? They were killed violently or with the idea of butchery. Uh, this group, again, is different from the church. Always keep that in mind. Uh, they're described as being under the altar. And uh, this, uh, for a long time, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't making the delineation. John is taken to heaven. He's looking there, and what does he first see? Throne of God. Mm -hmm. so he, he's, he, he's in the throne room of God. He's seeing all this, this wonder and glory and beauty and color and, and the four beasts and the four and twenty and the four and twenty elders and all these things that are going on around the throne. It's just marvelous. And so he's seeing all of these things. And then as I would go through this, this is a long time ago. I would get here and I would look at all oh, they're, they're under the altar, and my head's going, they're under the throne of God. No, no, they're under the altar. In the temple in heaven, which you've already been taught before, there's this glorious temple in heaven. The temple on earth was simply a picture of what it says of the truth, which is in heaven. Right. And so we've already been taught long ago there's, there's a temple in heaven, an eternal temple. And so they are under the altar. How are they under the altar? I mean, it's going from everything from the pavement around the altar is transparent, and, and you can see them under the altar, uh, to and personally, and again, because we don't know. He, he's given us, you know, uh, he, he tells us what he's seeing, and so all we can do is to say, okay, um, how do I see this? And I've always seen it, if you will, as the altar being raised, and all of these under the altar. And again, whether it's transparent pavement, whether it's uh, literally the, it's raised and they're under it, but the reality is you have these who are under the altar. And uh, just a, a great picture of under the altar. And this, again, is happening, if you will, in heaven. And by the way, these who are under the altar, um, what happens on the altar, on the physical altar? What happens? Sacrifice. sacrifice. What was the first thing they did to that sacrifice once it was bound on the altar? Killed it. Killed it. How? Uh, Cut its throat. Yeah. Bled it. Okay. You get a picture of the altar. They're under the altar. They're under the blood. Okay. And I, I think that's the, you know that's sort of a picture, if you will, that I get anyway. As here we have them. They're under the altar. They're under the blood. These are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And just, again, this wonder of what God has done. Verse 10, uh, John again records, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So here are these martyred for Jesus Christ during the tribulation under the altar in heaven, crying out to God, how long? I mean, how long are you going to let this go on? And, and, and they, you know, they want to know, and I think it's, it's a perfectly legitimate question. They've, over, they've given their lives. They know the bloody horrors of, of what is, is happening and has happened. And just like many of us today, we see horrible things going on, and, and we, we ask questions. Well, how could that happen? How could that happen in the United States? How could that happen in Wasilla? How could that happen here? But ultimately, how can that happen? Sin. But what they want to know is how long, God? How long? How long are you going to allow this to continue? They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? They don't doubt the fact that what he is doing is holy, and what he is doing is true to his word. They don't doubt that. And so how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? 
these who are causing all of this grief and pain. We'd like to know how much longer. And again, all, and, and white robes, then go to verse 11, white robes were given to every one of them. And so, as, as this is going on, somewhere within this picture, they're all given white robes uh, to them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. They ask the question, God's answering the question. Listen, you need to rest for a little season. A little while longer. He's actually letting them know that not much time is left. No, it's not over yet, but rest, if you will, just a little season. Until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. He said, listen, we're not quite done with this yet. There are some of your fellow servants serving Jesus just as you serve Jesus, being the testimony of the word of God and their testimony being put to death, just like you were put to death. They're, they're still out there, and there are people still get saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when those people get saved, they too are going, what, with the word of God and their testimony. And he said, listen, we need to hold off a little while longer. Again, the idea there, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, fellow servants, and, and again, a lot of people read this, and I, I certainly wouldn't argue with it. Fellow servants would be the Gentiles who are getting saved, and also their brethren would be the Jews. Yes, if they were trying to break that up. That should be killed as they were, as you were, just like you were killed. Listen, there's still people there getting saved, we realize getting killed and coming straight to heaven, it's not over yet. And so he asks them for just what a little season until that is fulfilled. And then we go on to verse 11. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Boy, it, it isn't just, you know, he's, he's seeing some of these things going on, but then along with that, there's this earthquake. And the idea here is absolutely catastrophic, worldwide earthquake. This is something they have never seen before. This is the tribulation time. And now an earthquake comes, as no one has ever experienced before. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Now, does that happen with an earthquake? What does that happen with? Volcanoes. I mean, the, the, the earth underneath, but with a great earthquake, what does it also upset? Volcanoes. And, and so he is now speaking of this happening, this great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. They, they made a sackcloth, and it was for things that were really heavy. And they made it out of the black hair of goats. And it was so tightly woven that it could not be seen through. And, and, and that, again, that sackcloth, uh, that was used also as a reference to being dark. Like if, if we would say, man, it's pitch dark outside. In, in their vernacular, they, they might say, uh, man, it, it's like sackcloth you know, out there. And, and, and so, you know, the idea of sackcloth of hair, I mean, it's just pitch black. And so, and the moon became as blood. And of course, we see those references in other places in the scripture. And again, of prophecy, of, of those things that God is talking about, these things are going to happen. Uh, and, and the earthquake is described also in Isaiah. If you take your notes, you can go to Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 21. Also Isaiah chapter 24, verses 19 through 21. And again, you, you will see how you know, these, these things are they're coming together. They're agreeing. These are the things that we're going to be seeing. These are the things that are going to be happening. Uh, and these events in heaven are such as never have been seen before. 
He's seeing these things. These things are all taking place. He's never had, no one has seen these things before. And so he's just trying to give a description. And again, that black sackcloth of hair. Uh, and as he continues to go through that, and the moon became as blood. Anybody remember what book that's in? Exodus. Hmm? Exodus. Exodus, but there's another that, that's a little more prophetic. The book of Joel. In Joel chapter 2, in verse 31, and the moon became as blood. And so, yes, there, there are several references. But it speaks of, of this event taking place. And the idea here is the great and terrible day of the Lord, is what Joel says. Listen, this is going to happen. It says, the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And so... Most guys working on prophecy, at least who have the same mindset as we do, uh, they put that in the first three and a half years because the idea of the great and terrible day of the Lord is the great tribulation that is spoken of, the second three and a half years. So they will put this in the first three and a half years. Verse 13, And the stars of heaven fell unto earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Talking again of the fig tree, and here's talking about the fig tree. Listen, the fruit's green. It's not ripe. It's not ready. And a big wind comes along, and what happens? It's, it, it loses its untimely. If it's untimely, it's too early. It's no good. It's not ripe. And the wind comes through it, and it just shakes that tree, and they all fall. And so this is something that those whom he is speaking to, those who he is writing to, this is something Israel would understand clearly. Hey, look, we're, we're talking about the fig tree. We're talking about unripe fruit. We're talking about a big wind and what you see happening. And so the stars of heaven fell unto earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And, of course, people go on and, and try to explain, okay, what was he actually seeing? Now, he described what, what he was seeing, and then we want to say, well, you know, yeah, was that really the stars? You know, that might have been meteors. And so, you know, we're, we're really not sure. And, and let me just add verse 14 here. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Every mountain and island were moved out of their Place. Listen, when these things started to happen, when the great earthquake comes, uh, when, again, you, you see, everything's dark, the moon's is blood, all these things are going on, and then the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, I've been here, there's been a couple of pretty good shakers. And in, in one, <laughs> that, that really got our attention. It opened up our cupboards, dishes come flying out, things are falling off all over. The house was a mess. I can't imagine what this is going to be like. I simply can't imagine. The earthquakes which we have been aware of and some of us have been in uh, here on this earth, this, it was, it was local. This, I believe, is going to be worldwide. And it's going to be a shaker like they've never experienced before. And setting off the volcanoes and everything else is going on. But here the stars fell uh, unto earth, even as that fig tree cast her figs. And, and again, a lot of people, there's all kinds of, of guessing going on as to what this was. It a, is it a tremendous meteor shower? Well, don't know. But what about this, this happens, the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. What, 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 what caused that? And so again, people want to say, you know what, that was a huge meteorite. And so you have all this stuff going on in the clouds, everything is black, and it's, you know, it's like it's just continued 24 hour darkness going on. And so we think this meteor comes screaming down you know, from the sky, blows through all that darkness and clouds and smoke and gases that's going on, 
And something blowing through it like that would do what? It would just roll it up. I'm going to take what he said. It's, a, it's light. Um, because we don't know. You know. We can come up with all kinds of ideas, all kinds of explanations, but we don't know. Right. And so I'm going to stick to his explanation of what it looked like. It looked like the stars of the heavens simply fell to earth. I'm going to tell you what, that would be scary. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, whether it's meteors, whether it's, you know, shot, meteor showers, any of those things, how the heaven departed as a scroll and rolled together, and all the mountains and the eye, everything is moving uh, out of their place, not just shaking. If you read what that says, it's not just the shaking going on. The islands and the world and the masses, they're moved out of their place. Um, can you imagine the force that moves everything in this world out of its place? It's not going to be where it was. And, you know, we so much talk about the tectonic plates and, and, and all of those kind of things going on and how they move and, and how that causes earthquakes. And, you know, they're just moving a big, little bitty bit at a time until they get at that friction point. Boom, and they, and they blow, and we got the earthquake. This is going to be monumental. This is simply going to be unbelievable. I am so glad I'm not going to be here. Amen. But again, verse 15, and the kings of the earth, and, and this, this is a verse also that I really studied a long time, trying to get a handle on it years ago. And the kings of the earth, so that those in absolute authority, the great men of the earth, those with lots of money, the rich men also, again, going kind of hand in hand. The chief captains, generals, and, and all of those in charge of the military. Mighty men, those who fight in the military. You know, our, our mighty men in, in, in our military, uh, you know what, they're, they're seals, they're rangers, they're, they're, oh, they're mighty men. They are trained in battle. Every bond man, every slave in the world, and every free man. All those who are not slaves but are their own men hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Wow. All of a sudden, this shaking's going on. Uh, stars are falling from the heavens. Everything's black. Moons is blood. Everything is going on. And everybody, from the highest in authority, to the poorest man is doing what? Trying to hide himself. Mm -hmm. Man, get me out of here. Okay? And so they're trying to hide themselves. They hid themselves in dens and in the rocks of the mountains. So not only do they hide themselves and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Does two things. It tells us that what they they know. They know that this judgment that has befallen them, number one is from God, he that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. They cry out to the mountains, to the rock, fall on us. Because what? They know. They know where this is coming from. That used to just absolutely amaze me. I used to say, well, wait a minute. If they know all of this horror is taking place around them, they know it's from God. They know it's from the Lamb. And so they know God. They know the Lamb. Why aren't they getting saved? Why aren't they falling on their faces and saying, Oh, God, save us. Forgive our sins. Let's revert back to some other things we already know. Those who have already heard the Word of God and have rejected, have given a strong delusion to continue to believe the lie, and is this some of them? You know, or is this, this them? Because now, even though they know it's God, they know it's the Lamb, they don't ask to be saved. They don't ask for forgiveness, they do not repent. They just recognize who it is, right. and from who it is. 
exactly what we're told in other places. When these things happen, men are still rejectors of God, are still rejectors of God in the end. And so it says, for the great day, verse 17, we're done with this chapter, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Nobody. Nobody. Men have stood and shook their fist at God since Adam sinned. Man has refused to believe in Jesus Christ throughout the millennium. Men have continued to say, hey, I'm not so bad a guy. You know, I, and I always like people's lists. Hey, I'm no, I don't murder anybody. I'm, I'm not a thief. I, I don't. Your list doesn't matter. You can be forgiven for all those things. What matters is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And without one, should the rapture happen right now? Wow. The unsaved who have heard the word, they're done. They're done. They're not going to get saved. Unlike some of the movies you may have watched uh, over the last few years. Uh, but again, for the great day of his wrath is come. There's no holding it back, no changing his mind. It isn't like, now I'm really going to get after you this time. No, this is the end. This is it. We're done. And who shall be able to stand? Nobody. In that day, the world will realize who is judging them. Secondly, it, it again, this whole the day of wrath is just getting underway. What we have looked at so far is the first three and a half years. I like these guys that say, oh, you, you know what? Uh, the church is going to go through the first three and a half years uh, because the, the real tribulation doesn't start until the second half. <laughs> That's right. Greater tribulation starts in the second half. Right. But if this isn't real tribulation... Uh, no, we're not going through any of this. Okay? Right. We're going to be raptured from it. And then lastly, the world realizes the impossibility of withstanding God. You can't stand against God. You cannot do that. And we're going to be moving on an interesting thing again to me as we move from this chapter to chapter 7. And what are we going to do? First seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal, sixth seal. Let's take a break. In chapter 7, we talk about something else. And it's not until chapter 8 that the seventh seal is open. And so next week, we're going to pick up, and that's looking at 144,000. And as we walk through that 144,000, and uh, I'll share some of that uh, with you next week, it, how delusional, speaking of delusion, how delusional some men are when it comes to 144,000 when it comes to their being sealed, when it comes to who they actually are, read chapter 7. And then try to figure out how anybody can read chapter 7 and say that it's not talking about Israel in 144,000. Amen. I, 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 I don't get it. I don't understand how anybody can read that and say, oh no, that's the church. Oh no, that's Christians. Oh no, that's Israel. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ offered to any and all who will repent of their sins and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, God, as again, we end this day. We pray that you are honored and glorified. We pray that your word was clear. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that your word has gone forth. And we know in going forth, it will accomplish that which you have intended. God, we thank you for it. We ask these things in Jesus' name.